we have just looked at visualization diagrams which are really useful for still image product but they're not useful if you're making a video or an animation and so storyboards can be useful because they are designed for this purpose so again they are visual tools too but in this case they show a sequence of pictures this time not just one picture comprising a moving image product so by this we mean things like videos animations video games comic books etc etc so we've got a series of pictures as opposed to just one and a storyboard looks like something like this this is from fast and furious 5 apparently so it's a planning document we we're just sketching out how we are expecting this moving image product to be we have each box representing one frame one picture maybe not exactly um, but roughly that's the order of what's going to happen so their purpose is to show you the timeline of a product so these images are not randomly uh, jumbled up there is an order to it and because we are at a fairly early stage now we're still just giving a rough idea so they can be useful of giving the person actually tasked in production of actually making this uh, a rough guide of how the characters should be looking maybe their costumes and also things like the background of each scene and finally they should show how it should be filmed and edited perhaps the director or the cinematographer and the editor all different people and they need to know roughly how the person who's designing this is wanting things to be done the order that it should be edited in um, the camera angle and so on so that storyboard just has those boxes for a nice visual sketch but actually a proper storyboard should in theory have other content as well so first of all it should be a numbering system for the scene a scene being a distinct unit within your moving product maybe you've only got one scene if it's a really quick advert but a movie or a tv show would have multiple scenes usually and so you should number it make sure it's really clear also it's important to give some estimated timings for how long you expect each scene should take that's going to help your director and also the editor too and also you might have a limited length you might only have 30 seconds for an advert and so having timings is quite important for planning that one out and so not only will you show the actual scene content in that box as a nice sketch of how it will actually look on camera but also it's important to do a quick description too because sometimes your sketch might not be incredibly clear and so writing what is what is happening exactly is useful obviously a static image doesn't tell the whole picture you might want to explain okay well the car is actually dr is driving in this scene that may not be clear in your picture and a few more potential bits which we can include on storyboards well we can also include the actual location where you are planning on filming this so is it inside a set is it in a cafe is it in a, a train station you can specify in and around your storyboard we also will want to list your expected sound so a script will be where this goes in much more detail this can just be a, a quick uh, summary so this includes dialogue dialogue being a conversation maybe some sound effects maybe some background music and some ambient sound so ambient sound is really background noise if you are in a station you would expect to hear people chatting trains coming in and so on not having that in your product might be a little bit strange and so you need to sort of start sketching out in a storyboard you can't obviously show sound in your little picture well um, you can't show it properly uh, but you can obviously add it at the bottom to make it really clear and finally um, there'll be other technical details so often shortened to FX for FX which we'll talk about now so there are loads of considerations for how exactly the camera is going to be filming um, your product so first of all, the actual type of camera can be specified so is it going to be a still image camera this sounds stupid for a video but actually you can do stop motion videos which are just sequences of still photos or it can be a proper film camera and also if you're doing say a video game you need to have a virtual camera and a virtual camera is not literally a camera hence the word virtual but we need to decide the angle is it going to be over the shoulder is it going to be first person where exactly is the camera going to be in each of our scenes and so you may actually draw a virtual camera in your in your um, storyboard box to show where the angle is going to come from and also there are different types of camera shots loads of different types which you don't need to know in detail just to give you a few examples don't worry too much about this so for example a close-up often shortened to see you on a storyboard this is from um, silence of the lambs a very famous film close-ups often show emotion extreme close-ups might be just on their eyes or just on their mouth so going even further still a mid shot or a medium shot is where we can often see most if not all of someone's body maybe some background as well and a long shot shortened to WS because it often also stands for a wide shot is where you can't see much of anyone in particular often it's for cinematic background shots 
We can also have further considerations regarding the camera. So really this would be the job of a cinematographer, also a director, maybe on a small crew. So you also might start to plan your camera angle, how exactly you're going to be placing the camera and you might reflect this in your storyboard sketch. So is it going to be an over the shoulder shot, like this one from Harry Potter, very famous shot in films and TV where you can see part of someone's shoulder, it kind of gets you involved in the conversation. Is it going to be an aerial shot? Do you need to hire a helicopter or a drone? It's really common nowadays for shots which are up in the air, like this one from Black Hawk Down. Or is it going to be a low angle where you're looking upwards, the camera is below somebody's face or below an object, like this from The Matrix. Again, these are examples, don't need to learn them, but the camera angle is, is something you do need to think about and maybe include in your storyboard. And the angle you can show if you're able to sketch it in your storyboard box, but actually we can't really show the camera movement, or not easily at least. So as you know, in films and TV, the camera is often moving even subtly. And there are different types of movement. These are again examples, don't need to learn them off by heart, but it's useful to know. So this is a pan shot where it's moving across, and these videos are from video blocks by the way, as you can see on the watermark. So it's moving across usually fairly smoothly. A tilt shot is where we are moving upwards or downwards, so the angle is changing throughout the shot, often for cinematic um, shots between scenes maybe. A track and dolly shot is a very famous one as well, where we have, as the name suggests, an actual track, like a train track. We get a very smooth camera shot as the camera is being moved, often following people, so it's tracking the people. It's not only a literal track, but also just tracking somebody. And finally, a zoom shot is fairly self-explanatory, we're moving in and out, maybe we're moving from a mid shot into an extreme close up, that would need to be maybe written down beneath your storyboard box because you can't really show any of these very easily in the little sketch. Finally, other technical details which may be included on a storyboard somewhere, maybe inside of a box of a sketch, maybe outside of a box, um, are lighting details. So we can also specify aspects of lighting and really the purpose of including details about lighting is to help the crew, not just the director and the cinematographer, but also just for people setting up for lighting, in this case, to understand where exactly things should be. So there are lots of different lighting types, none of which I really want to go into in detail. So for example, hard versus soft light. So you can see we've got a diffuser on this right hand side light. You see it in photography studios to make the light a lot softer, um, lower contrast might be good for certain purposes, but if you're wanting high contrast to make it really dramatic, hard light might be better. Also it can be natural light, it can be artificial light, you want to think about this depending on your purpose. So for example the actual effect might be, uh, on the left we've got um, a picture of an Apple computer under hard light, the contrast is much higher, whereas the one on the right is under soft light, it's much more soft. But also we need to consider the lighting direction. Here it's quite clear where the light is coming from because we can see shadows. The shadows are much clearer under hard light, but we can still see the shadow. And so you need to think about where exactly the light is going to come from. That may affect how dramatic you want your image to look, your scene to look. And also, you know, if you're filming it, say, at midday, you need to think, well, actually, is that when uh, the scene is meant to be because shadows will be really short at midday. If you've got a really long shadow and it's meant to be around lunchtime, that'll look a bit funny. So you need to think about it, maybe not incredibly important beyond the story, but certainly these things will be included under professional storyboards.